Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder and I'm here with Eric Rowley from the Barbecue HQ. We're gonna do some testing for you guys. We're gonna find out if a smoke tube helps your barbecue or hurts it. As many of you know, I've been doing some testing with pellet grills, trying to find the ideal method to use them to make great barbecue. And when I did a test earlier between a Traeger, uh, the Franklin offset smoker, and a Weber Smoky Mountain, over and over in the comments, people kept saying, you have to use a smoke tube, you have to use a smoke tube. If you didn't use a smoke tube, it's not even a fair test. Now, I've never used a smoke tube, but Eric has, and he has more experience with pellet grills than anybody else I know of. Various different brands, tons of different pellets. And so, what are your thoughts on the smoke tube? Is it worthwhile or not? Um, I, I think it's very subjective, honestly, Jeremy. Okay. Um, you know, no definitive answer. You know, you and I have different uh, preferences as we've done different tests like this. We see you and I might land on something and people choose something different, right? Totally. Um, so for me, I've used a bunch of different smoke generators through the year. Um, what I like about the smoke tubes is they're very cheap and they're, they are effective. Um, when I've noticed a big difference with them is when the smoke tube is on the bottom. Uh, shelf and the food is on the top shelf. So obviously that smoke is moving up through that. Right. Um, that seems to be more effective uh, than if they're on the same level. Uh, I don't like a real heavily smoked uh, food. Um, I like kind of that cleaner smoke that pellet grills do provide. Uh, but I have used different smoke generators like Smoke Daddy where it bolts into the side and you put actual chunks in there and you can really control how much you put in. But it's also a very expensive option. Right. Um, where the smoke tube for a few bucks, you have pellets on hand already. You don't need to get something else. Um, I've tried things where you actually put like a chunk on top of the deflector plate that sits over the fire pot. Um, and those chunks will actually kind of burn and smolder and do the same thing. So yeah, I've tried countless methods of trying to get more smoke. Um, but kind of my advice to people is stop chasing that smoke. Uh, I think people are really trying to replicate a stick burner or a charcoal pit, um, and you're not. They're just different principles on how they operate. So that being said, find what works for you. I do use a smoke tube a lot. I love to smoke cheese, uh, mm. nuts. Uh, I'll use it for jerky if I want to put a little heavier profile on my jerky. But other than that, I really, I don't use them a whole ton unless I'm really trying to chase a specific thing. So if you're cooking at home with a pellet smoker, are you using a smoke tube or anything to bump up the smoke flavor? No, I, I really don't. I just, I just, I, I guess I've grown accustomed to that pellet grill flavor, just that really clean flavor, flavor, and that's what I'm, I'm kind of chasing. But, um, but again, it's for everybody, and that's what's, that's what's so cool about it, right? Very easily, you can say, I want more smoke. You can add this. You can tweak. Um, I will say some pellets have behaved differently in the smoke tube. Really? That's a point where, I, because it is burning dirtier. I have gone, yeah, I can definitely pick out that's that's apple in that. Um, whereas like your oaks, you kind of your base ones aren't as much. You throw hickory, uh, you throw, sorry, mesquite in that, and wow, you're really it's gonna knock you on your on your back. But um, yeah, so that's the only time that I've really have noticed a tremendous difference with, with pellets is when I use them in the smoke tube, just simply because it's a little dirtier smoke. Right, so you're gonna get more smoke, but it's gonna be dirtier. So I guess maybe it's preference how much of that you want. Right. Because like with a Weber Smoky Mountain, if you had too many wood chunks, it kind of gets bitter and it's, right. I, I don't enjoy it, but a little bit is really nice. Right. So maybe it's a balancing act. Absolutely. And that's what, you know, so again, if the smoke tube's on the bottom and you're putting your meat over the top of it and it's going right up through it, that's going to have a different effect versus it's down below. And again, the natural uh, positive pressure that is inside of that from the combustion fan is going to move that out a little more rapidly out of that smokestack. So you're, it's not going to capture as much. Um, the other interesting thing I think about smoke tubes is you have to be very careful on the design of your grill. So okay. Green Mountain, for an example, their thermocouple sits below the grate level. Okay. A lot of people will roll that smoke tube off to the left side and it's sitting right next to the thermocouple. 
So uh, I've had many cases where people call me very challenged about what's happening because their grill either flames out. Well, the reason why is that smoke tube is sitting right there next to right. that thermocouple and throws the grill off. So it's just something to be cognizant about. And you know, so most of those thermocouples sit on the left side, the opposite side of the smokestack. Um, if you put it to the right side, it's just going to go straight out of that smokestack. Right, and it's right. not going to do you any good not at all. Not going to do you any good. So okay. you just be aware of what you have going on. I've seen some people make like little foil shields, but if you're, you know, used to the way that your pellet grill is cooking, um, you know, make sure that that thing is not that that smoke tube is not impacting your 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 smoker. Fair enough. And to get the fairest results possible, what we're doing today is we're cooking ribs, but we season them with only salt and pepper, so we can really pick up on the differences in flavor. So these are Porter Road ribs. They have great marbling, so this is going to be the best chance for each one to shine. So let's take a look at these two grills to see how we have them set up. All right, Eric, I noticed a lot of smoke pouring out of this grill and not this one over here. And for anybody who's wondering, we're using the same pellets in both of these. We're using cooking pellets. They're perfect mix. So that's got to be consistent. So we're trying to do everything the same way with one variable, in this case, the smoke tube. So can we see what this is set up like? Yeah, let's open it up. So uh, even before we open, we can see how much more visible smoke is coming out of this. Um, you know, and, and it, I'm actually really happy. It's not, yeah. to me, it's not a super thick, I would put it a little more towards that thin blue side, so not too bad, but it's, it's definitely visible. Um, and you can see we're wrapping that, uh, that smoke is coming up and around. Right. And uh, even right now, you hear the fan kind of ramp up a little bit and uh, you see a little more smoke move across. So um, yeah, so this is a method I prefer if I'm really gonna make a difference sure. on that smoke flavor is again, and this is, this is our custom great systems that we build here and sell out of the shop. Um, and I really came across this years ago because I found it, pellet grills cook so much better on that second shelf. Yep. So, um, but again, you can see that smoke tube, it's really dumping that smoke off. And, and we, we see color on here already. This yeah. has only been on for a few minutes and it looks like, in my experience with most pellets, it takes an hour plus to get that kind of color. Right. So really nice and deep dark red. It's gonna presumably keep getting darker and darker. So I think we should have a clear result between the two, something different. I think so, yeah. Visibly, I'm thinking we're gonna see a difference, uh, especially when we start having some moisture and spritzies. Um, you know, now, so I loaded the smoke tube up. I usually don't add the smoke tube for more than two hours okay. or, you know, kind of set it up for that. Um, the smoke tube we're using is expandable, so you can run it for longer duration. So if I'm doing cheese or something like uh, that, well, more nuts, cheese, you don't put a whole lot of smoke on it because it, it gets really intense. But uh, yeah, for nuts, I'll expand the thing all the way out and, and use that for six or eight hours and try to get that slowly across. Um, the other thing that's cool about smoke tubes is you can use them in gas grills. You can use them in you can use them in a, a wood box if you wanted to. So um, you know they're they're a really cool, inexpensive, versatile tool. So let's take a look at the other pellet grill without the smoke tube. You can see it's set up the exact same way, and these ribs are also starting to get a good color. But that could be because of the heritage breeds of pork that were crossbred to make these. So what you have is more myoglobin in the muscle fiber, it creates a darker color. Also, I think it contributes to more flavor and more moisture retention while you're doing the cook. So these should be really, really good on both of these grills. It's been a few hours on these ribs, so we're gonna just take a look visually and see what we can find out between the one without the smoke tube and the one with the smoke tube. So first one without the smoke tube. Okay. Yeah, good looking rack of ribs. Yeah. The uh, meat's definitely uh, taking on a good color, starting to render pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you just see the juice dripping down. I'm, I'm thinking these are going to be juicy ribs. So when you buy quality, it, it makes a difference. Man, yeah, that looks good. Let's go check out the smoke tube. Okay. I'm going to make a bold prediction. It's darker. <laughs> yeah. But let's see. I'm downwind, so I'm going to eat more. Okay. Of it. Here we go. Smoke tube. Yeah. Wow. There we go. Significantly darker. Yeah, you may want to step out. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to move that way. So. Definitely a lot of smoke. Yeah, good pullback right here. So you can definitely see a difference visually. I just don't know if this is gonna be good flavor or if it's gonna be kind of bitter, off-putting flavor. Right, and that, that for me is why I've, I think I've kind of gone away from them. I don't really care for that bitter flavor. To me, it's a little more of a creosote taste. Mm. Um, that's why I've kind of kind of gone away from them. Um, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, there. and if you look at this window, it's really deposited a lot of smoke on there. So I mean, is that something you want to eat? I don't know, maybe. We're going to find out. So on the smoker with the smoke tube in it, we have incredible color in not a long time. And even the one without the smoke tube, we have really good color on that too. So I think at this point, we're going to wrap in foil, maybe spritz them with some vinegar, and then just get them tender. Let's do it.
Now you're probably thinking this looks pretty weird, but we decided we were gonna blindfold ourselves so we can judge these ribs strictly on taste. Because there's such a big difference in color, we knew that by looking at them, we'd know immediately which one is which, and then we might have biases that creep into our judging of the flavor. So in order to avoid that, we think this is the fairest possible way to do it. And so we're gonna taste these and give you our honest thoughts before we can even take a look. Okay. All right, so where, where are the ribs? You got are they, one rib in front of you. There, that, there's a rib on the table? Rib? Right. Rib? Yeah. yeah. All right, okay. go for it. Rib. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm going in. Have you both got the same rib, right? Yes. Okay. I don't know, it's pretty good, Jeremy. It's pretty darn good, man. It's a good quality. Mm -hmm. I, mm. I gotta keep going. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I think there's so much smoke flavor, this had to be the smoke tube one, but I'm not picking up dirty smoke. Yeah. This is really good. I know. Um, boy, just as a standalone, it's very difficult to tell. A standalone rib, really tasty, great mm. smoke profile on it. Um, not, I was expecting, if it is a smoke tube, I was expecting a little bit more bitterness. I'm not getting any of those off-putting no, flavors. No, none of it, none of it. Was it because it was a relatively short cook? Well, I mean. Well, that's assuming that this is the one with the smoke tube. Yeah, so let's, uh, should we bring the other one in? And yeah, let's try the other one. Drop this napkins. off the edge of the table. <laughs> okay, rib number two is in front of you. Oh, oh is it? You're sneaky. Okay, yeah, I had no idea. Very, very sneaky. <laughs> that's my rib, right? You got a rib? Wow, this, yeah, this, okay. this so rib almost smells like bacon to me. Oh yeah. Huh. All right. That's a smoke tube. <laughs> oh, this is the smoke tube. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You're getting a little bit of the off smoke taste. Like, it's still very good, but I wouldn't want more. The first rib, I'd be like, I would take as much of that smoke as you want to give me. Do you think, so what do you, what's your take on the bark on this, Jeremy? To me, it's a little dry. Mm-hmm. I think maybe it kind of dried out the outside a little bit. Yeah. Um, mm. I mean, it's good. The good thing is the inside is super moist, but. Right. Um, I don't know, man. I'll just keep eating this. Yeah. So th this was a smoke tube? Yeah, that was a smoke tube. Oh yeah. yeah. Good job. Um, I think I honestly prefer the first one. I do. I like the regular one. Yeah. I thought it was great. Really good smoke flavor on that. Hmm. I mean, it's good. Definitely a smoke, but it's definitely a little richer mm -hmm. smoke, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's where that bacon hit. Yeah. Uh, do you, you get that too? Yeah. It's got to be the. Uh, Maybe it's like they cold smoke bacon or something. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely in that cold smoke taste, right? So yeah. Maybe that's what we're grabbing is that cold smoke. Yeah. Attributing it to bacon. Yeah. So I'm gonna unblindfold myself here. Yeah. I don't know where I'm. Yeah. Okay. All right. So my thought is, I prefer the regular one. Yeah. There's more smoke flavor with the two, but it's not better smoke flavor. Well, it's interesting because like. I feel like I the pepper, like salt and pepper really, and that's what I've always been fearful is over smoking and, and knocking down those flavors of good seasoning. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're, and we're just dealing with salt and pepper here, but sure. um, so the, I think that the things that threw me, or I, I didn't really care for is a little drier bark. Yeah. And it wasn't a, it was a thicker bark, but almost too much. Like I said, it was dry. It wasn't that like bite through. You had to kind of like right. tug on it a little more. Um, and then we're pretty familiar with this pork. Mm -hmm. Right, we've been eating a handful of them, and yeah. I will say, it definitely overrode the value or the the outstanding qualities of that pork. Yeah, I think you're so, right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would go to number one. I mean, and again, I know people like this. I know people really, really like that enhanced smoke flavor. For me, it's not my choice, but I think the the issue for me was. On the first sample without the tube, there was plenty of smoke flavor already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't need anything else. No. And I think, like, if if you really need to try to get a darker color or something, maybe you could use a smoke tube. But right. in terms of 
the flavor you get in each bite, I prefer the first one. I absolutely agree. Okay, so those are our thoughts. So let me know if you guys use a smoke tube and what your opinions are. You can also let me know in the comments down below what experiments you wanna see next. I love to do those experiments, so I look through those comments to get ideas for future videos. Now, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Mad Scientist Barbecue, and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys next time.